Hey, how's it going, Rob? It's going great. Good, good. Uh, today's your uh, first visit after our initial visit, so we're just going to go over everything and, and actually take you through a first visit and uh, see what we find and, and start working on you and getting you back to health. Oh boy, that would be great. I definitely want to be the number one ambidextrous tennis player at the age 70 okay. in the United States. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to getting you there. Okay. All right, let's do this. Okay. Um, let's go face up for me. Okay. Line on your back. Scoot down a little bit. That there? there we go. Good. All right. So we're just going to take a look at some muscles and see if they're okay. balanced, right? Um, come up here. We're going to turn this in a little bit. So we're just going to try and isolate muscles as best we can, pull across. Um, and see if they're functioning again not necessarily weak or strong can't go to the gym and strengthen them up it's not like a, you know I'm trying to outmatch you or overpower you I'm just trying to see if the muscles firing correctly it's kind of like it's either on or it's off almost like a light switch okay. right? so um, we'll call that either facilitated or inhibited it's either firing or it's not okay okay gently touch your teeth together push back on my hand for me excellent then don't worry about your teeth Throw down to the floor for me. Throw down. Okay. I'm going to bring this into the side. And teeth gently together. And push out for me. Okay. Then bring it all the way down. Lock it in here. Teeth gently together. Pull into your side. Okay. So that guy's a little inhibited. He's not firing like we want it. Teeth going to push out. Nope. Yeah. That's okay. You're doing good. So that's the big old latissimus dorsi. Mid back muscle. And basically stabilizes the mid back. Holds your shoulder down. Trap brings it back up. So if that muscle's off, sometimes we could have mid back discomfort on that side or the opposite, right? And then we could have trap pain because it's starting to pull up like that. Okay. And if I do have uh, shoulder pain and then uh, have uh, tingling going down yeah. the side of my neck. Yeah. Yeah. So the nerves would kind of come up through there, and there's only so much room. So if they're getting squished, because Again, muscle imbalance, other reasons too, but that's one of them. Yeah. Now we're going to start to feel nerves and tingling and all that kind of stuff in the hand. And we won't be able to play as tennis as well. That's so. right. Well, I've been, right. I haven't played tennis at all just all right. because I've had so many problems with my neck and my back. All right. Well, we've got to get you back on the court. Yes. All right. Push back. Okay, good. Keep it here. So again, we're just pushing, seeing, hey, does it facilitate? Bang, I... I, I uh, push and you push back and sort of resistant yeah. or is it just some kind of give to it like this muscle over here yeah okay straighten the leg for me turn the foot out bring it towards me hold this up push up to the ceiling okay good bend the knee keep the foot up pull your heel back to your butt kick your butt bring it down everybody knows how to kick their butt all right pull in for me all right we're gonna flip to the other side here I know we're filming but we gotta go over here pull in for me Okay, bring this up, uh, straighten it for me, turn the foot out, bring it towards me, a little bit more, push up for me, not so much. So we have a psoas muscle. So psoas, major stabilizer, low back. Pretty much everybody that has low back problems, they're going to have a psoas muscle issue. Um, Piriformis is another muscle, it's a big one. Because but I have pain in my butt all the time. All the time, yeah. Tight muscle. Okay, so again, muscles move bones. So a lot of times we'll look at the muscles not firing very well, and then the other muscles that are hurting, sometimes they're just working overtime, or they're just pulling in that direction to start to cause a problem. So we want to address that as well as the muscle that's not doing his job, because usually it's the guy not doing his job, yeah. he's the troublemaker. Yeah. Pull your heel back to your butt, and we got to kick the troublemaker out. Yeah, fuck <laughs> yeah. Push back, or at least talk to him and tell him, hey, fall in line here. Yeah. Push in. Okay, straighten the leg for me. Just a psoas and latissimus dorsi. Lock this in. Teeth together. Pull in. Okay, one more time. And pull, yeah. And then bring it up. So we're going to that. Turn this in. Nope, the other way. Yeah. Lock your elbow best you can. Pull across here. And that guy too. So now we're just going to take a look at some uh, acupressure spots. Or we call them neural lymphatic spots. So just kind of hold over top of that. Kind of over the liver area. But I'm going to look here. Pull across. Yeah. Okay. That seems to support some things. And then we have psoas over here. Just turn it out. Old push up. That seems nice. And we're going to kind of come back around the table. And we're going to come in here and we're going to flip flop hands. Hand over that spot there. Lock this in. Teeth together. Pull in. Yeah. So we call this primary uh, muscle. 
So in primary organs, so muscles and organs have relationships. The nerves that go to a muscle typically also go to some kind of organ. So we can actually have a combination of things chronically. If you acutely injure something, it's typically the muscle. But a lot of times we're set up for injury because the organ is a little irritated, not getting what it needs, causes a problem with nervous system, the nervous system takes it out of muscle. So a lot of times we don't have just a muscle skeletal problem, we actually have an organ issue, because you're a whole person. You're not you know, separated out. You're not a heart, liver, kidney, right? You're a whole person and it works all together. It's an enclosed system. So we kind of want to address it like that. And that's why we talked about it in the first day, looking at what's going on mentally, yeah. emotionally, what's going on with chemistry and diet, and now we're looking at structure. Yeah, I've had a hard time trying to figure out what is the best diet for me. Yeah. And what should I eat? You know, I just have no idea. Yeah, yeah. So now we're going to try to look and break that down from a functional and just ask your body, hey, what does your body actually need um, and what kind of diet is best for it? With, again, blood work, urine analysis, plus all this stuff we're looking at structurally. I'm going to get all that done in two weeks. Well, yeah, we're going to do our best. All right. One more time. Pull in here. Yeah, not so much, but we're kind of over here. Pull in. Awesome. So, bring this guy. I'm going to kind of have to walk around the table again. <coughs> All right, pardon me. All right, we're going to bring this up. I'm going to turn this in. We're going to take this hand. We're going to kind of be more on this side of the neck. All right. So, we talked about left brain, right brain activity. So, the right brain is more of the brakes, left brain is more of the gas, right? So, a lot of times. Yeah, a little bit of both here. So, do you turn this in for me? Pull across? Okay. And then come back down um, over to this side again. Pull. Pull across. Not so much. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to walk up the top. And it's okay. We're going to work on you. You may hear that's that noise. Okay. That's okay. I'm happy that, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, why, <laughs> that's why we're that's here. That's the type of chiropractor yeah. I'm used to. And that's why All right. I came to you because I wanted more. Push back? All right. Okay, we'll keep it here for a bit. And we're gonna again, we're gonna focus in a little bit more. I think before we do that, we're gonna kind of palpate here and push back. Keep it here. And push back. Okay, so one more here. So uh, with muscles, just a window in the brain. So we kind of uh, push over here and see if we need some stimulation or push over here. Um, there's a bit of a rebound phenomenon. If I push one way and it's not in the right position, it kind of rebounds farther into a problem. That has a negative impact on the nervous system and it changes the muscle. If I go on this side and we don't notice as much, nothing really changes, I'm really not aggravating over here, right? I need more stimulation on this side. Right? Okay. Now, continuing on, let's do a little bit more of this. Take this hand, we'll have some fun here. Cover your left eye. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna get you to um, count by twos for me. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, right, 40, 42, 46. Okay, we can stop. All right, 44. <laughs> <laughs> So what we're doing there is we're just increasing a lot of left brain activity yeah. and we're just seeing how much your body thinks of that. Muscles again, just a window into brain. So when we do that, your brain goes, eh, yeah, I get a little too much of that, thank you very much. So the right side of the body stimulates the left side of the brain. So again, as you said, we want to be a little bit more specific. Chiropractic's awesome, but if we can kind of take it to another level and go, okay, how can I stimulate the nervous system a little bit uh, better? Right, we're going to get more results or fast results. And I'm all about time, money, and effort. The, the less we can do of, of each, that's awesome, right? Yeah. We want to get the best results as fast as we can. Okay. Now we're going to do a little bit of more right brain stuff. So okay. we're gonna cover, let's cover right eye here. And I just want you to hum a song, any song you want. Okay, keep your left eye open. Left eye open. up just for the sake of the camera. Turn this head, Chuck, and push up for me. Okay, good. Back down. All right. You can stop pumping. That was a good job. So when we increase more right brain stuff at this moment in time, 
then that helps us out. So we'll, we're going to do a little bit of right side of stuff. We're going to focus more on the left side of your body. Um, and if we're 60, 40, you know, not so bad. But if we start getting off 70, 30, 80, 20, where, hey, I'm using more right or more left, it starts to kind of can cause some issues and cause imbalances with what's going on with the spinal column and what's going on with the alignment and really how the muscles work because muscles move bones. So we're going to work on just kind of gently stimulating with all the stuff that we do um, and, and try and kind of get more of a brain balance and actually get all the muscles on because we've got three big ones. we got latissimus dorsi not working very well. We have a, a pec major sternal muscle, shoulder muscle not working very well. And then we've got a psoas, a low back muscle, not working very well. Yeah. Okay. So I'm shifting over to doing the weight machines. Huh? I was doing most of the, uh, the surgical tubing exercises okay. and the Pilates. Yeah. And so I'm getting ready to do the uh, weight machines just to get greater stretching and greater bulk and greater strength. Yeah, yeah. That, that's actually uh, it brings up an interesting uh, thing to talk about is that a lot of times we'll have uh, patients where they'll do a lot of bodybuilding, right? A lot of muscle and stuff work, and they don't do any cardio. And then I'll have patients do a lot of cardio and they don't do any, you know, muscle. And we'll actually see with athletes, um, you know, we'll have sprinters, right? Sprinters, they think, oh, they're just kind of doing, you know, muscle stuff and all that. And, yeah. and they can actually get out of alignment or get out of balance because they don't have any cardio, yeah. right? And so we've got to kind of pay attention that we're going to have guys that do, you know, 20 mile runs or whatnot, you know, yeah. they're doing marathons. Um, and now they're all cardio and they got yeah. no muscle strength. And that actually changes what's going on on the inside as far as what fuels they uh, use, anaerobic, aerobic, you know, different things going on with what they do inside the body. So we want to make sure that we're getting a good balance between both of those, whether it's, you know, different types of whether it's Pilates or strengthening again or cardio and all that. So that's good to hear. Right. Yeah. We want, we want to get a mixture um, as best we can. We train towards what we're trying to do. So if we're, you know, a power lifter, we're going to probably do more stuff that's, you know, short and sweet to the point, but they also want to do a little bit of cardio, yeah. right? And then vice versa, you yeah. know, the guy who's running all the time, yeah, yeah he's going to train to that, but he also wants to do a little bit of strength training. So you want to get the best, you want to have a balanced body when it comes down to it, that, yeah, relax that. And then wiggle your toes for me, wiggle your toes. Yeah, one more time. There you go. Perfect. Good job. Oh, yeah. I feel good. Well, they definitely know what to do. No, Most yeah. guys, you know, they're tentative, yeah, but yeah. they're not very good. They yeah, yeah. just sort of pop and pray. <laughs> yeah, so you know what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I've had hundreds of chiropractors adjust me. And you can always tell the ones that are really excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no doubt about what they're doing. 18 years of counting, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that helps. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's go live face down for me. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So that's a big deal. Yeah. I can always tell. Yeah, sometimes it's just kind of being calm and relaxing and, and, and yeah. waiting for the person to relax and breathing and, and all that. And then, okay, here we go. Yeah, we'll get them to wiggle their toes. Yes, the wiggle relax. their toes, yes. Because everybody's afraid, uh, you know, of the neck adjustment, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah and once they've had it done, they find out, wow, that wasn't that bad. And yeah. Gosh, that actually feels good. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what my neck needed. Yeah, awesome. So we're going to focus in here a little bit on the right down low. So this is the, you know, the arthro stem. So it goes about 12 beats every second. And uh, not as forceful, right? Yeah, but works it just as well. And we like to do both. Or really, we like to do what the body needs. Yeah. Right? Whatever you need, that's what we're going to give you. better than one adjustment and that's it. You're going to have to go in 10 seconds. Yeah, we'll see that quite a bit. Yeah, it's a definitely a different way of how we work on somebody. We'll usually spend about uh, anywhere from 15 minutes to 20 minutes with them. Um, and it's actually me. You know, you're not going from therapy to therapy. Yeah. To, you know, hot pack, cold pack. And, yeah. and that, you know, sometimes that's necessary. We can do a lot when I'm actually the one yeah. working on you and doing things. Well, I've got like five different massagers, thumpers, and um, every type of massage you can. And so I end up doing uh, probably way too much of my, on myself because I don't know the right place to do it or the amount to do it or the 
pressure the user or the settings. Yeah, you know what? You make a val valid point, right? Yeah. Uh, I like to quote like the three little bears. Yeah. So, you know, not too much, not too little. It was yeah. just right, right? Um, yeah. And so we got the cold laser going on. You're not going to feel it, but it's on, it's doing its thing. And um, yeah, so we, we can have that where I notice it where we're trying to, again, really fine tune and go, okay, what does this person need at this point in time uh, today, right? So we don't want to underdo it, we don't want to overdo it. We want it just right to, again, to get the best, best possible results. And yeah, you know, people go out there and they'll over train, right? They get oh, yeah, really yeah. sore. Well, yeah. you can do that with stimulation to the body. You can, you can over stimulate. Yeah. And so I think that's the, the, the greatest thing about the, the functional neurology and the applied kinesiology. We can really dial in, okay, well, what, how much is too much and how much is not enough? Yeah, right? that's really it's not, important. Yeah, as you said, it's not pop and pray. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, that's the truth. That's that's what I don't need. I've had enough of that. Yeah. I've had so many broken bones. Every time I get a pop and pray, I'm I'm praying that uh, none of my broken bones get broken again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, we'll go over that the next time I see you. We're gonna actually address old injuries. So that's something that doesn't get addressed a lot. Yeah. Um, people think they're all healed up and they may even have done some type of physical therapy, but there's actually a neurological uh, component and a memory component to that. So your eyes actually deviate to the point of impact when you injure yourself. Um, a lot of people don't know that. And it kind of locks into uh, the nervous system, a, a basic kind of muscle memory. And so now what the brain says is, that, oh, I'm not going to turn those muscle and all those fibers on at 100%. Because the last time I was running and gunning, well, old Ralph hurt me, yeah. right? So I'm gonna, I'll throw in most of them, but maybe not 100%. And that changes the way that muscle moves that joint. And yeah. so twofold, now we're more susceptible to injury down the road, and we probably increase our chances of arthritis because that muscle's not moving the joint right, and we start to inflame that joint and break it down and all of that. So old injuries and going through, we call it injury recall uh, technique. And we kind of go through that and, and work on trying to negate those negative feedback loops that were kind of created uh, when you injured yourself, right? And again, yeah. that's, just, that's not really to do with strong or weak or you know, the muscle per se itself. It's more to do with what the brain has perceived yeah. ever since you had that old injury. Yeah. So anyways. That's a valid point. All right, that's our percussor. Percussor works on, again, scar tissue breakdown, you know, myofascial adhesions, um, helps with the lymphatic system, um, helps with, bring this up, uh, bend it for me, push back. Yeah, lactic acid buildup, so if you've overdone it at the gym, it kind of yeah. helps quicken things. One hand right here for me. Yeah, and push for me. Oh, good, take it away. I like to call this the Macarena. Hand here for me. Yeah, push. Okay, keep that there. And then other hand here. Oh, uh, Macarena. All right, palms up. Got to have a little fun when we're here, right? Okay, one up, one down. Push. Ah, okay, take it away, take it away. So there's different, different again. So when we're putting hand here, putting the hand there, it's just sensory input. I got my hands on my hip. I got one hand up. I got one hand down. And uh, push up. The hamstring is just a window into your brain. And we're just doing this and we're kind of feeling, right, again, what's the nervous system kind of think about all that. So keep this up again. So I think we had a right push up. Yeah. Right PI, left AS. Yeah. So let's go face back up for me, my friend. So we're running the gauntlet with kind of all the things that we, we, uh, do here at the office. We had the cold laser, we had the percussor, and you just being a very compliant patient, we're going to do the blocks Give today. it to me all. Yeah. I need right? everything. Yeah. So there I you go. I need a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're in the right spot here, right? <laughs> so we're going to come on. So the blocks are great because, again, they're very gentle. They just kind of stretch things out. All right. Good. Awesome. And then we come back and we'll do a little bit more with our laser. Yeah, it'd be great to be able to not be afraid that you're going to hurt yourself, 
or that you're already on the edge of hurting yourself or that something is going to break down each day and so I have to stretch every day and yeah. you know try to make sure I work out at least every third day just to try and keep some muscle tone going. Yep. Yeah, it's super important, right? A lot of times when people will take in a new activity, they'll change their diet, they'll start a new workout program, and they'll never come in and get analyzed to see, well, hey, what's going on with my body first, right? Um, and we want to do that because you could go, when you change all that, that's more stress. Even though it may be a good thing, it's stressful because it's a change. And so now your nervous system may not fire things like it should, and now I go and exercise, or I change the exercise up, or I've changed the diet, nervous system isn't firing like you like, and now I'm susceptible to injury, and I hurt myself. Yeah. We see that all the time, where patients go, oh, I was having such a good kick, and I yeah. kind of switched things up, and I hurt myself, and now I haven't been in the gym for three weeks, yeah. and I'm kind of, ah, oh, back to square oh, one. That's frustrating. Yeah, and so we like to look at people, analyze them, and go, okay, let's make sure everything's nice and balanced, now go start your new diet, or now go start you know your new exercise program. Really, right? So yeah. if there's a dietary change. Let's make sure everything's balanced. And then again, if you're going to train, change things, let's make sure everything's balanced. And then go. That just um, makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah. 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 Time, money, effort. Right? We want to oh, get the best. Yeah. Right? Well, we're wasting any of that. Okay. Bring this up for me. And this one down by your side, yeah, good. Keep it straight, okay. Gonna come in by the hips and poke on you. Push back, yeah. Okay. Push back, okay. Very right. relax it down. So I like to think of that as you're cooked. So we put uh, some pressure on the ligaments with the blocks in, and then if the muscles are inhibited when we're pushing on there. And then we kind of figure the muscles or the joints have relaxed and kind of realigned. And then we take the blocks out and push back. We we'll make sure that everything's kind of come back to normal. So we go in and poke again. Yeah, and then after now we have the blocks out and everything's good. So we know we've got the realignment that we are looking for. Um, and we want to recheck again, make sure that it's doing what it should be doing face down. So let's go face okay. down. Yeah, there you go. Excellent. And then we're going to do our mocker in again. Okay. Push up. And so uh, palm up, palm down. Yeah, either one. Yeah, push. And then flip flop them. Yeah, push. Okay, both up. Yeah, no. Sorry. No, oh. this one. There you go. Bring this down. Push. Both down. Yeah, relax the leg just a bit. And push. Okay, one at a time. Yeah, push. Flip flop. Push. Okay, this one, palm up. Push, take it away, palm up over here, push, okay, good, relax, take it away, yeah, push again, okay, good, bring it all the way back down, all the way back down. Okay, a little on two seconds, we're going to do a little bit more. <clears throat> now, with the allergies and different things that are happening, more of a drip, 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 or, yeah, I think that was what we were talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, interestingly enough, what we'll see a lot of times with the drip, drip, drip kind of sinus, yeah. um, uh, congestion in the liver, actually. Yeah. So again, supporting the body's ability to get rid of stuff, um, and that's diet, we've talked about that, um, helps get rid of some of that uh, inflammation and irritation on the inside of the body that's causing that outside over the reaction, the hyper reaction to the out in external environment. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. So what would be a good diet, basic diet for me? You know, um, I am uh, a big fan of either the ketogenic diet or um, looking at the uh, paleo diet, right? Um, yep. So I'm sort of on the paleo now, I eat mostly protein and salad. Yep, yep. Um, so we might talk in terms of autoimmune. Sometimes there's different um, nightshades that don't jive with people. Yeah. Right. So things like eggplant. So some of those are the things that we, we can do is have 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 you come bring your stuff in with you. Yeah. Let's go face up. So um, you can bring some of the foods, in, especially the ones you eat a lot, even if we consider them to be good. Yeah. Sometimes the body doesn't doesn't jive, or it's been right. good for a while, yeah. and now it's created an imbalance. So. Sometimes we'll just say, bring the food in, we can put it on the tongue and we can start testing it out and seeing if it actually is a good thing for you 
or a bad thing from you. Um, if we just were to keep diets real simple and just said, um, I want to get a rainbow of colors, I want to eat twice as many veggies to fruits, we want to have no nothing processed, everything as organic as possible, and then get some lean meats in there. So greens and lean meats, you know, what you're kind of doing, and then rotate the crops, make sure I'm not just eating the same thing over and over again, um, and getting a wide variety of those colors every single day. And it's probably lots of water, one about half an ounce of water for every body pound. So yeah. a lot of people are dehydrated, just don't yeah. get enough water. So if we cut ourselves in half, if you're 200 pounds, you need 100 ounces a day. Right, so we want to break that down, um, and if you stick to that, you know that that's really, really, really good. Right, but in looking at being real specific, just bring some of the foods in again that right. you kind of think, oh, I think they're good, but I eat them all the time. Yeah, right? okay. that that's where it can be a yeah. problem. Where, yeah, I mean, I've been eating that for 50 years. Yeah, right. Yeah. And okay, well, well, the first 25 was good, but yeah, <laughs> now the broccoli is maybe not driving well. Yeah. That's typically not the case, but. You know that you know when we're talking about something good, but it can become a problem. So, yeah. right? so rotating, making sure we're making changes. Okay, uh, that was good. That was good. That was good. Let's bring this down here for me. Lock this elbow in. Teeth together. Pull in. All right, and then we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna bring this up for me. Turn all the way up. Push up for me. Awesome. So what we're checking is if we stimulated the nervous system correctly, the muscles that were not firing. We should start to see fire again. Okay. Okay. So turn this in for me. Yeah. Don't bend. Lock your elbow and pull across. And we're going to do the other side as well. Right. We're going to come up here. Turn it out. Hold. Push up. Yep. Good. We're going to go over here. Turn this in. Hold. Pull across. Awesome. Okay. That's good. So now last but not least, let's we'll do a little bit with the cranial bones today, and then we'll be finished. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, sure. That definitely has serious blows to the head. Yeah. In martial arts oh. and surfing. Keep this up. Skate yeah, San, San Diego guy, right? Yeah. Uh, push back for me. Okay, keep it here. Push back for me. Okay, so right side, left side. And I'm going to here. Push back. Okay. So a little known fact, push back, uh, hands down, cranial bones actually move. And they move in unison with your sacrum, your butt, and your hips. Yeah. And so a lot of times when they're not moving, uh, we tend to have sinus issues. Headaches too, a lot of people with migraines I noticed. Cranial bones don't yeah, move when yeah. we breathe. So we can't really adjust those uh, cranial bones, but we can um, we can work with them so they move a little bit better when we're when we're breathing. So yeah. this is don't bite Dr. Ozzy because we're gonna work inside of <laughs> your mouth. Internal, no. internal thyroids, you go. Yes, to yeah, like, yeah, you know. Huh? Oh. Oh. Uh, so you don't know, you you really don't want this. We going used on. to do those on, oh. when I worked on patients. Yes, at TMG. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Did the all oh, the time. yeah, brutal. Oh, so cool. we've got a little, you know. So we're not actually work. This is a little bit more cranial bone stuff. So it's the roof of the mouth and the yeah, teeth. Yeah. So we're we're actually a little lucky. We're not going after the pterygoids today or temporalis or anything like that because we're not really doing TMJ. Yeah, yeah. So but. You're so true. At some point, we may get into uh, that as well. Yeah. Uh, so today we won't, you know, try to beat you up too much. Okay. So open it up for me. Okay. And then breathe in. Blow it out. 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 Last one. Breathe in. Good. Take a moment so I don't pass out. Right? I know. Mm -hmm. The doctor I used to work with, he did, uh, he's one of the pioneers in uh, doing cranial adjustments. Ah, uh, we're going to open up. So we're going yeah, to really go deep breathe in. Blow it out. Breathe in. Blow it out. Last one, man. Well, good, good, good. So um, the left side is moving a lot better. 
Well, that is a right. huge deal. Yeah. To know that you know cranial, that is a huge thing. Yeah. Great. Um, the uh, um, right side pretty stuff, the left side was, was better. So I didn't have to do as much time to come on this one. All right. So I'm breathing in for me. I had a kid in here one time, smart as a whip. He was young. Yeah. I was doing cranial bones on him. And so how do you know how hard to push? Do you practice on coconuts? Yeah. And I started thinking to myself, you know, coconuts are kind of hard, like a skull. They got a little bit of hair on them, you know, like. It's, yeah. And I'm like, that's pretty impressive, kid. Like yeah. you could have picked anything, but yeah. you, you're like bang on. I'm like, no, I don't, but I think I will. <laughs> All right, breathe in for me. is a little muscle up here. If you just pinch sometimes muscles, they'll actually kind of quiet down a bit. So a lot of times this muscle, I think it's something anticus, but don't quote me on that. So sometimes we're stuck up. It'll, uh, it'll open up some things for you. So that, I think, you know, we're trying to breathe the right strips and stuff. Yeah. I think that's part of what they do there. So breathe in. Blow it out. to see as we continue through here looking again as you mentioned all the old traumas yeah those, those are some big ones so if we can yeah. work on those old traumas um, I've actually seen a lot of times range of motion get better and yeah. every time you know if that gets better <clears throat> yeah. there's just better information to the brain yeah. and then better drainage right yeah. so when we're all when we're not draining really well and then drop it down my hands yeah um, that causes a problem Hold on a well, in the first uh, experience I had with a chiropractor, one of the pioneers in cranial therapy, uh, Dr. Starwald, I was working out at one of the first Nautilus gyms back in like 19, um, well, let's see, it was 1972, mm -hmm. actually 73, and uh, I was working out, I was doing the pull down bar behind my head, and the bar came loose and dropped like five feet and hit me right on the top of the head. Oh. And I thought, oh, thank God it hit me in the hardest part of my body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, my back just went out like the next day, and I was just in agony. And I uh, went to Dr. Steigerwall, and he looked at me and said, My God, your head is crushed in. And so it took him like a month to uh, press on the interior, the bones of the mouth, and the head, and just to get the uh, cranial plates back into alignment. Yeah, but great. I thought that well, it was lucky it hit me in the head. Yeah. But he said your head's one of the most important parts of your body. When it's misaligned, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, super. So again, the, the sutures in there, right? We, yeah. They don't. They move. They move. Sutures, yeah. yeah. And uh, they actually have a huge impact on the, the nervous system, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. when they're not moving right, you can have some real odd neurological kind of symptoms. So it just overall bad health so, oh yeah yeah so that you know a blessing there is that you knew him right that you're all that would go in there yeah. and get that type of treatment because that that just uh, you know especially back then yeah you know that just didn't really exist and you know uh well it was just a fluke because yeah my back went out and i just happened to make friends with him and uh he saw my head and said gee your head's crushed in and so i went to the guy that owned the gym and i told him he had to pay for it get my head back into alignment and yeah. uh, you know it took a, it took a while but well I'll tell you my back was so screwed up in yeah. my head too yeah yeah compaction injuries so uh, we'll talk about that so there's just, yeah there's lots I'm excited there's lots of yeah we can do before of the, broken bones and extreme accident injuries from yeah extreme sports that's one way for sure to break a lot of bones yeah 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 yeah, yeah and again that, that it, it needs a 
lasting impact on the oh, body. Yeah, right? yeah. And so, and again, just so much stuff that, again, if we talk a lot of pipe and stuff, that comes into, hey, there's things that we knew that you needed oh, yeah, done, yeah. but even no more that we know yeah. now about older injuries, yeah. hey, we can apply this and apply yeah, this and, yeah. and see if anything shows up and we'll start working on yeah, it. Yeah, and build right? the onion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Onion of dysfunction. Yes, the, the onion. Yeah, dang on. I'll use that word. Everyone's an onion. Okay, so that was good. That was good. We got the neural lymphatics. Uh, I got to the cranial bones, which I think was excellent. Um, okay, do not do this to get off the table. Okay, I won't. Okay, so just bend one knee or the other and then okay. roll over on your side. Excellent. Come on up. Fantastic. Your first, uh, first uh, go around with us. That sounds great. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. I'm so thrilled Absolutely. that you know all those because yeah. it's like putting together the best of all the chiropractors that I've known over the last 40 years. Yeah. Thank because you. I've known some of the best. Yeah. It's nice to find somebody that knows all the different techniques that really work and put them all together yeah. to give a complete cure yeah. as best as possible. That's what, yeah, we're going over overall. That's kind of how I uh, put the practice together because that's just how my mind works. I'm like, okay, there's, you know, there's different pieces. It's not just one particular thing. And how can we uh, have a well-rounded approach, right, from whether it's chiropractic or nutrition, all that, to, hey, let's work on all these different things. I kind of look at it again as a martial arts, yeah. where, you know, you, there's a lot of different martial arts, yeah. but you can take things from every one of them, yeah. put them together, and it's more well-rounded. Right? And I kind of look at the body that way, too. Well, I'm excited. Right. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, Ozzie. Absolutely. I appreciate yeah. it. Good. Good having you in.